Did you know that selfies make you uglier than you really are? This might come as a relief if you've been sending a selfie to your boyfriend or girlfriend lately or trying to upload a good looking selfie on your favorite dating app. The good news is that in fact, you're not ugly at all. But the actual problem is that when you're taking a selfie of your face, it's completely distorting your face, meaning your selfies don't look anything like the way that you actually look. I mean, come on, just look at this. This is a shot of me with a wide angle lens. My face is really distorted. My eyes are just super huge and not that flattering kind of, hey, you've got beautiful big blue eyes kind of look. They just look bad and my nose is huge. And now this is a shot of me with a 50 millimeter portrait lens. This is actually how your human eye would see you and how others would see you. Just compare the wide angle selfie shot of myself to the portrait lens shot of me. Is it just insane to see the difference? One shot is super distorted, everything looks disproportionate, whereas with the portrait lens, it looks a lot more flattering, a lot more proportionate, and overall, it just looks good. Okay, this video isn't actually about selfies, but it is about focal lengths. But I wanted to share with you that funny example because it really shows just how important it is to choose the right focal length when shooting portraits. Because there's a time and a purpose for every specific lens, but you gotta know when and why. So here are some of the differences between shooting with a wide angle lens versus a tighter portrait lens when it comes to shooting portraits. When it comes to wide angle lenses, they often stretch and distort the person's face. Whereas when you're using a tighter lens, it's a lot more proportionate and less distorted, which makes it a lot flattering photo of yourself. Wide angle lenses as well make the background look really far away. That's why whenever you see a beautiful sunset or a crazy moon in the sky, to your eye it looks great, but the moment you pull out your phone, you're like, oh, that doesn't look good at all because it just shrinks down to such a small size. So all of a sudden, the moon that looks huge to your eye is just this little dot in the sky. And that's because you're trying to take a photo of the moon with a wide angle lens. Whereas with a tighter lens, the background is gonna be a lot closer to the subject and a lot more compressed. And that's what we call lens compression. It compresses everything from the subject in the front and the background in the back close together just to give a nice look to the image. And lastly, with the wide angle lens, you're gonna get a lot less depth of field or bokeh, which is that nice blurry background that you want when you're taking a portrait of somebody. Whereas with a portrait lens, that's exactly what you're gonna get because the background is being compressed to the subject and it's just gonna blur out the background, giving you a nice focus on the subject. So when you're shooting portraits of somebody, you probably want them to look proportionate and flattering. So you should definitely avoid lenses that are wider than 24 millimeters because at that point it's just gonna get really distorted and not looking good, especially if you're taking the portrait up from close. As well, you wanna get that nice depth of field to really separate your subject from the background so that all eyes are on the person that you're shooting. And that's why you wanna shoot with a lens that's more tighter than 24 millimeters. So for example, 35, 50, 85, those are the lenses that you're gonna get a really nice depth of field and bokeh to your shot. Most portrait photographers like to use the 50 millimeter. It's kind of like a standard portrait lens and it's no coincidence because the 50 millimeter is closest to what your eye sees. If we're getting really precise, the eye is actually around 22 millimeters, but it's that overall picture that you're seeing. So when I lift up my hand here, it's more in the peripheral of your eyes. So the 50 mil is more that kind of direct viewpoint of your eyes when you're focusing on someone for example, someone's face. Just to show you the difference in focal lengths for portraits, I went out and shot with my good friend Robin, who's actually my new editor and filmer on this channel, and I took photos of him at 24 millimeters, at 35 millimeters, at 50 millimeters, and at 85 millimeters, all at f2.8. And here is the comparison between all those photos just for you to be able to see what the different lenses look like when it comes to distortion, when it comes to the compression between the subject and the background and the depth of field. Here you can really see the difference in look between each focal length. Personally, I really love the 35 millimeter and the 50 millimeter for portraits. I feel like it's not too wide, but it's also not too tight giving you a, a easy time shooting portraits of someone and also you get a really nice depth of field. 
Once again, which focal length you use is often a really stylistic preference because lately I've actually been loving shooting portraits with the 24 millimeter prime with Sony, which is something I've never done before. So there's a lot of, you know, experimentation with different focal lengths to get different kinds of looks for your portraits. So yeah, that's focal lengths in a nutshell. Hopefully this video will help you to know which lens to choose for which situation in the future. And as well, I hope that this video brightened your day to make you realize that you're not actually ugly at all. In fact, you guys are all very handsome and beautiful. All right, hopefully this video put a smile on your face. We're over and out.